Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, Eastern Standard Time. Boy, this getting dark really early is messing my schedule up. But regardless, welcome to Travel Talk Tuesday for November the 9th, 2021. And our topic tonight is Sorrento, Italy. I'm, uh, as you can tell, home for a few weeks, back home in my kitchen here in Middleburg, Florida, and uh, have been just having a great time putting together a lot of these videos that uh, I took just a few weeks ago, last month in October, while I was uh, tooling around and uh, working on my uh, tour, new tour itinerary and near the Amalfi Coast, the Bay of Naples, the island of uh, Ischia and Procida, and the town of Sorrento. So uh, that's what we're talking about tonight. Now, Sorrento is a town established by the Greeks. So you'll see this town is laid out in kind of a grid, north to south streets, east to west streets. So at the Sorrento is a delightful town. Most of what you can see in Sorrento and visit in Sorrento is a town where you can walk from one destination to the other, or you can walk from one end of the town to the other, uh, the old town in about uh, 25 minutes, even at a very, very slow pace. And from the, the top of the hill down the harbor is about a 15 minute walk. So a small little town, cobble streets, pedestrian friendly. We just had a wonderful time spending seven nights here a few weeks ago. So with that said, let me move on and share a little bit. So as I've been saying each week, the past few weeks, you can see Italy, you can see uh, that Naples is way down about an hour and a half by train from, uh, there. Hey, David McGuffin and here. Let David uh, talk welcome to, you. to this edition of Travel Talk Tuesday and my recipe segment. Uh, tonight, I'm making a recipe, chicken marsala. Now, chicken... Uh, by the way, tonight, it isn't full screen. I'll show it to you a little bit later, but this is a brand new concoction by me. It's uh, instead of having the salami and cheeses, I made a flatbread with tomatoes and cheese and basil on it. And so I'm going to be munching on that. I'll share the recipe if it's good. I'll share the recipe next week with you. But that's what I'm munching on here tonight. Marsala is not really any dish that you will find in Italy. It's an innovation from uh, the Italian Americans, I do believe. But the two ingredients you'll find often, chicken and marsala. Now, marsala wine comes from the region down in Sicily in a town on the very uh, south uh, western coast called Marsala. And the wine there, the grapes there are pressed, bottled, and fortified with additional alcohol or a uh, what we call a fortified wine that lasts a whole lot of time and doesn't go bad. So uh, it was used to back in the day to be uh, shipped up from Marsala similar to like port uh, from Portugal and the English uh, imported it up to England in those trading days, the days of early exploration and trade into the Mediterranean Sea. The ingredients are here are pretty simple. It's uh, some extra virgin olive oil to put in the pan to uh, start the mushrooms, probably about two tablespoons of that. Uh, then I have uh, three cups of sliced mushrooms, which I've already sliced right here. I have uh, about a pound of chicken breast. Now, I do this chicken breast a little bit different. Uh, I, I take it and I cook it on the grill for until it's half cooked. So let's say uh, four or five minutes per side. Before I cook it, I make sure I'm gonna go check I on my grill. a lot chicken. of salt and pepper on it and then a little Italian seasoning. Uh, I, I seem to like that going. I also like to use uh, the, what's called Montreal seasoning. That helps too. So I cook it, put it in a baggie, let it chill off, cool off, and then I take it and I pound it with a pot. I pound it with the pot to flatten out. Now keep in mind Now keep in mind that this is half cooked chicken breast. Uh, that pounding with the pot is uh, something I learned from watching Julia, Julia Child when I was small on PBS. So uh, it works well. <laughs> so that chicken breast, I'll use that. There's also um, 
about a uh, half a cup to three quarters of a cup of Marsala wine, a cup and a half of chicken broth, uh, and then I use some cornstarch, uh, probably about one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch, and I'm gonna mix that up thoroughly with the chicken broth uh, just to make a consistent paste in order to, as a thickening agent at the very end. Uh, in order, and for the, um, the, the pasta that's gonna go with it, I'm gonna use a farfalle or bow tie pasta tonight to go with the chicken marsala. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is put a little salt into my pasta water, getting it ready to go. That's about uh, two tablespoons of uh, sea salt. Cover it so that it boils a little quicker. And over here on my frying pan, nonstick frying pan, I have uh, some olive oil in there, maybe two and a half tablespoons of olive oil that I'm going to uh, get heated up just a bit until it kind of glimmers. And then I'm going to put in the mushrooms. Okay, so the next step is to add in the mushrooms. A little tricky since I'm here filming myself, but you get the idea. <laughs> Once the mushrooms are in the pan, I'll spread them out as much as I can and let them cook down for at least five minutes. And you can kind of tell once they begin to soften and get to a consistency that you would like. I'm not going to season them with anything at the moment because I've got seasoning on the chicken and of course we're using Marsala as well. So let's let those cook down for five minutes or so and we'll come back and take a look at it. As you can see, the mushrooms are cooking down pretty well. This is after about four minutes on high. I'll let it go for another couple of minutes until we go to the next step. I moved the mushrooms to the side of the pan, put in the chicken, let it begin cook for a couple of minutes, then added the marsala wine and a little parsley. That's what you see the green stuff here. Let it simmer until the chicken is done and the marsala is boiling. Some of the alcohol comes off and then put it on a plate and eat it. So here you have it, chicken marsala. It's tasty. Bon appetito. I see a couple of you that are uh, watching um, tonight that are uh, fanatics for Weight Watchers. And that actually is a Weight Watchers recipe. And it's zero points, at least on the old plan that was before today. And uh, so uh, you might want to keep that in mind because it, it was really tasty. Now, this flatbread that I have, let me get up, let me get up here. This flatbread that we have, uh, I'm going to say it's a winner because, uh, 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 like I say, I just concocted it today. I put a little less yeast than I would in pizza dough. And uh, so I chronicled my adventures of cooking this today and experimenting with it. So I'll share that with you next week. But that, that's a winner on the flatbread. So now to Sorrento. When we arrived in Sorrento, uh, we, our hotel was up on the mountaintop about 1,200 feet above the ocean and about, uh, gosh, about 900 feet. Six, 700 feet above the town. So from our hotel balcony and our pool, we could look down onto the town, onto the Mediterranean Sea, the Bay of Naples, Mount Vesuvius in the background. The hotel was called the Art Hotel Gran Paradiso. And the reason it was called the Art Hotel is because each room was done uh, and decorated by a particular artist who uh, put their paintings or maybe sculptures in each of the rooms. And on the yellow door to go into each of the rooms, they scrawl their name across it. And then scattered out through the lobby around the pool area and everything else were uh, works of art as well. Anything of uh, art made from uh, corrugated cardboard uh, into, fashioned into a couch or a chair and a table. Uh, to just wonderful photog uh, photography, photos, uh, and uh, paintings as well. So this, this, this hotel, the Art Hotel Grand Paradiso, is a keeper. It's going to be a staple 
place to stay on my Amalfian Islands tour. So without further ado, let me introduce you to this hotel. Today I'm in Sorrento, Italy. This morning early we started out on the island just over here, Ischia, and uh, took a ferry across to the mainland to the port of Naples, which is just over here in this area. And then we took a shuttle right below Mount Vesuvius through these mountains. And now we are here at this wonderful hotel overlooking the town of Sorrento from and the Bay of Naples. Boy, it's just a, a beautiful place. Let me give you a, a 360 spin around here so you can see where we are. This is our hotel with balconies up there. Looking back to the west, sorry, it's in the sun. But that's a 360 degree spin from where I am right now. Your adventure starts right here with David McGuffins exploring Europe. So a couple of photos. This is me sitting at the pool, looking at that same uh, Mount Vesuvius on another day. You can see it's October. It's a little chilly there, but the, the sun is pleasant. This is my balcony from my room overlooking the seaside. Now I've confirmed these balcony rooms for our April uh, departure. This is inside my room, looking from the balcony to my room. You can see some of the artwork there as well. Uh, this is the reception area and uh, another, some of these artsy uh, couches and, and benches and whatnot, artwork on the wall. The pool area taken from afar, looking across the entire pool, the infinity pool. And uh, this is the, uh, the, the bar area outside by the pool deck. It's a bit chilly, so no one's out there. This is the dining room, the breakfast room. And then the looking back to kind of the north, northeast from, uh, from our hotel, looking back to there. Hey, David McGuffin here. I am in Sorrento, Sorrento, Italy at Piazza Tasso. And this is uh, Signore Tasso right here behind me. I'll tell you a little bit about him in a moment. Let me just do a 360 spin because uh, the traffic stops right here behind me. And then from that point, it's a pedestrian friendly area right here in the center of town. So we're gonna take a little look at the town center of Sorrento this afternoon so you get an idea of what's going on here. Hey, I look forward to showing you around. This is the main square of Sorrento, Piazza Tasso, and it's named after this gentleman, Torquato Tasso, who was a poet that was born here in the middle 1500s, 1544, born here in Sorrento. Still in Piazza Tasso, looking toward the, the old town, which is here on a sort of a grid plan. And uh, down in this direction is the, uh, the Bay of Naples, the seaside, and up this way is the mountainside. Now, you wouldn't know it, but right underneath this piazza is a massive gorge in a river that flows down through the cities, just like cities in the Cinque Terre and other seaside mountain towns. Uh, so this gorge is covered right here in Piazza Tazzo. We're gonna walk up and just take a look at the old gorge before we discover more of Sorrento. Okay, this way is the new town, and I call it the new town. It's two, over 200 years old. <laughs> They've been constructing over here, but uh, up until uh, probably the uh, mid 1700s, it was all farmland in that direction. Uh, we'll look at this. This is the patron saint, Saint Anthony Agate. Uh, saint Anthony is the patron saint of Sorrento. We'll take a look at him and learn a little bit, a little more about him as we go through this walk. This is looking out toward the Bay of Naples into the sea. And right beyond those flags, the uh, 
the uh, the gorge begins running down into the sea. I'm walking in the opposite direction of those flags, and this is uh, the street. Obviously, is uh, paved over the ancient river gorge bed. So here's the road I just walked up. The sea is in this direction. This hotel, Antike Mura, the ancient wall, sits right on this gorge. And it's kind of difficult to see down there because the sun is right in my face. But maybe you can see how far it's down. And for centuries and centuries, this was a gorge. And the water running through here was used to power uh, various types of mills, flour mills, uh, saw mills, and that kind of thing. And you can see the river just continues it goes from up in the mountains so the river is coming down here goes under the ground and exits out near the sea in this end so from piazza tasso behind me straight down this corso italia it's about a 20 minute walk to the seaside on the other side of the town. This is a typical characteristic little lane, a lane here in Sorrento. Uh, the Greeks settled here, gosh, around 450 or so, 450 BC, and uh, established a grid-like street plan in this town. So hence we have uh, streets running parallel and per perpendicular to each other. This is a little back lane just to get an idea. This is inside the cathedral. Uh, the cathedral is dedicated to the Pietà, uh, which is the, uh, you know, disposition of a Jesus Christ in the arms of Mary. And the artisans here in Sorrento are known for their inlaid wood um, works of art. Uh, let me let me see if I can rewind it just a second here, kind of show you this. There, there's one. So this is uh, inside that cathedral. There was the Stations of the Cross done up in big panels that were probably uh, four feet by three feet and uh, with small little pieces, minuscule pieces of inlaid wood depicting all these different colors, making the scene of this particular uh, segment of the Stations of the Cross. And uh, so it's amazing. And uh, you can go to the shops of these artisans and watch them do work. There's uh, two or three that we've popped into and they're really older gentlemen who I guess it might be a, a dying craft, a dying art, because um, I was only in one shop where the son and grandson of an older gentleman was in there working and still doing it in the way which the artisans have done for centuries and centuries. Intarsio, I'll put it there to help me remember how to say it in Italian, inlaid wood, intarsio. There are also these wood carving of statues as well, which are coming up next. And they are so very intricate. The Madonna. And uh, Presepe are nativity scenes. And these are all over Southern Italy. And each church tries to outdo the other. And at Christmas time and Advent, each town has an outdoor Presepe that. Uh, depicts the scenes of uh, Jesus Christ being born. And this particular one, you can see um, that uh, we have the typical scene of uh, Mary, Joseph, uh, Jesus being born, angels up above. But down here, you can see typical uh, people who lived in Sorrento at the time. Even, I don't know if you can even see it, but down here, there's a guy that has a sausage in his hand, you know, so uh, uh, Chingale and that kind of stuff. So uh, typical scenes of Sorrento to bring it home. 
This is the bell tower for the church. You wouldn't know it until you hear it ring. This is the Corso Italia, the main drag, the main street through town. This street runs west in this direction to east. And this little street, main street here, is the Via Giuliana, Giuliani, Via Giuliana. It runs uh, north to south. So I want to impress upon you that uh, this town is unlike any other town that I've been to in Italy because here it's a very famous destination for the English to come vacation. And so consequently, everybody here speaks perfect English and almost without much of an accent at all. And uh, there were on that main drag, the uh, Corso Italia, there were two English pubs and two Irish pubs along the way. So if you get a hankering for Guinness or uh, Bangers and Mash, you can always get them right here in Sorrento. And uh, so it was, it, was, it was quite an adventure because uh, you don't see that anywhere else. So uh, another good reason to visit Sorrento. This is Saint Anthony, or Saint uh, Anthony. Anthony here was an abbot in Sorrento in the early Middle Ages. His uh, deeds and miracles included saving the city from uh, the bubonic plague, also saving them from uh, invasions from pirates. You'll see that he's standing here on this square with his foot on the head of a dolphin. It looks like he died in St. Anthony was born in 555 here in Sorrento. And uh, the thing, the two statues of him in town with his foot on a fish, here a very benign looking um, dolphin. What was that dolphin called back in the day when we were all kids? Um, well, I can only think of the one in, in Dingle. Uh, Fungi. Oh, the one we know is Flipper. Flipper. And uh, so this looks like Flipper. The other one is kind of a, a wild looking dolphin. But the legend goes is one of the miracles that St. Anthony performed was that a big fish came up onto the bank and swallowed a young kid and took him out to sea. Anthony got in his boat, went out to sea and rescued the boy from the, from the fish's mouth and brought him back to sh shore Lo and behold, it's a miracle, and that's what one of the things that made him a saint. So uh, take it or leave it, that's a legend, but uh, that's why his head or his foot's on the head of a fish. Located just in front of the statue of St. Anthony is St. Anthony's Basilica. Now let's go inside and take a look around. Now this is a beautiful Baroque era church. And down below, which I'm gonna zoom in to this little uh, area down here, down below on the, in the crypt is actually where the bones and the relics of St. Anthony are still housed to this day. So once we zoom in here, I walk down the stairs. Now we're gonna be looking at the next scene down below. And that's Anthony standing there, the crypt, and some of his remains in this area down here. And the, and the, the crazy thing is this, and I'm not a Catholic, so I'm not sure how all this works, but St. Anthony is, um, he's the saint of all the people who are challenged and have hard times and medical issues and even death. 
And uh, so these people would come and pray to St. Anthony, and then they would buy these medallions and pin on the wall down here in the crypt. So these people had issues with their, their gut, their abdomen, their rib, their innards. And so they purchased a silver trinket to put on the wall in memory of their being healed from that. Here's some uh, with, um, I think, maybe breast cancer or something. I'm not sure. And here's people who had issues with their legs and were healed and with their hands and feet. So uh, some of you who may be Catholics can help enlighten me with that, but I'm not quite sure how it works. But there are a lot of people who believe in that and go to pray to St. Anthony and provide offerings for St. Anthony in that 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 particular church. Okay, back up on the street. We come to a little park, take a right turn around the corner, and we come to another church of San St. Francis, San Francesco. And you know him, he's uh, of nature, the saint of nature. And this is his church. You can also see it's decorated in the Baroque style, the Baroque era, what is it, 1600, if my memory serves me correct. And from that church of St. Francis, we just take a right turn and then you're out the door. And this is uh, the small little marina down here called the Piccolo Marina or Marina Piccolo, looking down these cliffs of about 200, drop, 200 feet dropping into the sea. There's a few little places for sunbathing, but you can see how crystal clear the water is there. And the park up above is very, very nice as well. And there's an elevator or a lift heading down to that marina. These are the grand vistas. Back in Piazza Tasso. Another statue of St. Anthony. You can see this other fish that he has his left foot on. It's a little more sinister. Or maybe it's a gator. I don't know. <laughs> So today is the 20th of October and uh, the municipality of Sorrento has just yesterday put up their garlands for Christmas. Maybe this will be illuminated later, but Christmas is a very big thing here in all of Italy. And most of the uh, Catholic world from Bavaria, Austria, Salzburg to the south so there's always big celebrations, markets, prosepi, major scenes and everything. So I would imagine sometime soon they're going to turn on the lights here and Christmas will be in the air. Okay, the next little montage are, uh, we were there, as I mentioned, seven nights. So we dined there all seven nights. Uh, and so... Uh, I just wanted to share a little bit about the menu that we had and the music here in the background is actually the music, live music recorded on the train that runs from the town of Naples or the city of Naples to Sorrento. It runs around that bay and it's uh, so it navigates the bay around Mount Vesuvius. So let me see if I can say the name of this uh, correctly in Italian, the Circum Vesuviano. Circumvesuviano. And uh, so this music was recorded there. And I'll talk over a little bit about what we, uh, the, the food we had. By the way, this is local wine. Everything, every piece of wine bottle you see is local wine. It says, um, our vino, uh, we love it. Uh, it comes from the sky and the land. These are some mussels with just pepper on it. Fantastic. And a lemon. Uh, we have a lot of this uh, tomatoes and mozzarella cheese that are very prevalent in southern Italy. You can get chicken and french fries too if you just don't like anything else. This is a piece of uh, burrata, uh, no, a piece of fish, uh, bronzino, ravioli, a pizza we had near Pompeii, which is just up from Naples, another uh, bottle of wine, vina la filo. 
Uh, this is a roasted or fried zucchini blossoms and some shrimp. Notice no heads and it's peeled. Uh, this is a Vesuvius wine from the volcano area called uh, the Tears of Christ. And another wine press you can see. Uh, here we go. I've got a filet with uh, some roast uh, fried potatoes. Of course, we always have to have an aperitivo. Uh, this is Campari Spritz lasagna with mozzarella, fried calamari. Uh, another piece of uh, steak, sirloin steak and french fries, risotto, ravioli with tomato sauce. And this particular piece is a piece of uh, cheese as well. And I want to just stop for a minute because I'm at the end of the food food section. But I want to tell you the difference because, you know, at home, we a lot of times hear about mozzarella cheese and we buy it in a little uh, cellophane wrap prepackaged cheese that's pretty hard, kind of like uh, the size of a, a baseball. And it's, it's good. And that's what I've used on my focaccia on this uh, flatbread that I fixed. Uh, we also have uh, a type of cheese that you maybe find packed in water called uh, burrata. And that's cheese with a creamy inside feeling, filling. Uh, and then we have the, the, the top cheese is the mozzarella de bufala. And that comes from the area of Sorrent, uh, Salerno, which is just south of where we are in Sorrento, about 50 miles. And it's cheese made from the milk of water buffalo, bufala. Uh, so not American bison, bison buffalo milk, but water buffalo like you see in the rice patties in um, First time I ever even noticed where they were was in Vietnam during the filming of uh, some of the news footage from uh, Vietnam War and everything. Uh, but here in Sorrento, they call the cheese that is made from cow's milk. Here is called Fiore de Latte. So the flower of the milk. And uh, we vi visited a farm that had, uh, we saw the entire production of this cheese. And uh, I get, it rivals any uh, buffalo de mozzarella that we've ever had. So uh, this is uh, Fiore de Latte that we see here on the screen. Oh, tuna tartare was fantastic. Another bottle of wine, aren't you surprised? And this is uh, some uh, filet steak with another type of cheese. And some more mussels. And gosh, I don't even remember that dish, but it's something loaded with tomato sauce. And here we got some, um, that was some uh, uh, raw beef. And we're getting near the end here. I, don't, I didn't do the uh, word raw beef very well because it's called carpaccio. And uh, it's, it's very high grade beef, sliced very thin, served on a bed of arugula uh, with Parmesan cheese and a little olive oil on it. Uh, it's pretty good appetizer as well. And uh, so we have this bottle of wine that I stopped on is out of character for the area because it's a uh, Rosso de Montecino. Uh, so from up in Tuscany, but just for variety, we had that one night as well. And a little fried calamari again at another restaurant. And ravioli homemade with tomato and butter sauce. So I told you about the cheese. One day we went to a farm way up in the hills above the above Sorrento. And it was called uh, Turiziello. And uh, the gentleman there who owned the farm took us in this little uh, Vespa Ape converted car on a Mr. Toad's wild ride from the village up to his farm way above town. And we got to experience him making uh, the mozzarella fresh from his cows, which he just milked that morning. I don't know if you can hear him. 
not very good either. This is at a, a lemon orchard. Not for the production. Because lemon if you can't hear it, basically he's saying that the lemons always produce, but the last 18 months haven't been very good because no one bought the lemons. And the lemons are mostly used for the aperitivo limoncello, which is lemon juice, grain alcohol, and sugar. This is the town square. And here's our joy ride. I saw your farm. Benedetto, you saw your farm? Oh, my time is up. Oh. Okay. Yeah. You okay? Meet <laughs> Extra virgin olive oil. So you can see same view After you of Vesuvius in the background. He's promoting his olive oils. You will see. The visit for you will be seen. And the olive oils that is infused with different types uh -huh. of taste, like Before the stable, lemon, after we will come pepper, back again to uh, even truffles. I told you, mozzarella, cacciottina, ricotta. Mozzarella and cacciottina will be, I will do in front of your eyes. You will taste what I will prepare. But before of that, I will show you the stable, the animals, what they hate. Okay. This is a view from the stables. Now, his cows don't roam very far. They're, they're pinned up. So that was disappointing for me, but I've also been to the um, Buffalo de Mozzarella farms, and those, those cows, those water buffaloes, are pinned up, but they have a lot more freedom to roam back and forth. So these cows, I guess this is their life. They stand, lay, eat, and are milked. That's why people love me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I didn't show a whole lot. It's not a law. You can so find it in other places. Producing the mozzarella, which basically is taking the meat, warm, separate the curds and whey, like both the cow. put hot water in it, and then, I know that and then don't pull, it, <laughs> pull it <laughs> until <laughs> it oh, develops wow. into oh, a cheese. Wow. Uh, you know, like stuff. curds and whey, no? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Dressing. And he does this day in and day out. Like, there's no break because the cows don't quit milking. They don't quit mixing milk. So they can't quit milking the cows twice a day. There was tons of cats around this place. I wonder why. Like the rising for the bread. So this is the uh, cheese curds that he's breaking apart. He's putting hot water in it which brings it to a certain temperature and then he's able to work it into balls. And the final product are some of these mozzarella fiore de latte that we had throughout our time in Sorrento. By the way, the tomatoes there are fantastic too. Uh, those San Marzano tomatoes are just to die for. So thanks for sticking with me tonight. I hope you enjoyed a look around Sorrento and uh, the areas in between. We're going to uh, continue this experience uh, next week. So we're visiting nearby Pompeii next week. And uh, so Pompeii was a, a city that was a Roman city and uh, that in um, 79 AD was covered with uh, ash from a volcano eruption of Mount Vesuvius. So a lot of historical uh, artifacts and uh, context there for next week. Just a fantastic place to, to visit. And we'll also look at the museum in Naples, I think, as well. So listen, thanks for sticking with me. We've got a dinner to cook here and something to have. But uh, thanks for sharing it with me. And uh, hey, your adventure starts right here with David McGuffin's Exploring Europe. I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.